HRC, HRC, HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, brothers and sisters. I'm your brother Kasafo. And I'm your brother Zakwa. Hope you all enjoying the Sabbath day and this series of edification for the sisters and brothers in the faith of Yache Christ. Before we get going here, brothers and sisters, as believers, we all have a duty we must perform for Allahim. We ask that you all, if Allahim guides you to do so, and if the lessons are helpful for you in your walk, to share the lessons, post them on your social medias. You can edit, chop, cut segments, whatever is needful for the people. We just ask if Alahim places it on you, man or woman, if he places it in your heart to partake in the work to spread the gospel in this fashion. Now, we're getting in today into women's garments and some admonitions. Before going into this lesson, hopefully you had the opportunity, and if you didn't, please refer to the tab and lesson called Clean Versus Unclean Garments for edification on general clothing, like fringes and materials for our clothing, according to scripture. The website tab gives good visual aid as well for putting fringes on clothing as well to be sure to reference it for edification. Now, picking up from where we left off for the edification for the sisters in the faith of Yache, let's jump into the laws and ordinances for the women's garments. Zakwa, can you read Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, please? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto a higher the Elohim. All right. The simplicity of women's clothing is that she ought not to wear things that pertain unto men. So her garments were the headgear, shirts, long garments, underwear, pants, and etc. just ought not to be designed for men, so as not to wear that which pertaineth unto a man, as the law says. Now let's understand this whole thing. Through the scripture, men and women do wear similar categories of clothing, like coats, robes, mantles, girdles, which are belts, bonnets, which are types of hats, and different types of pants. The scriptures help confirm that the differentiation of men and women's garments is by the masculinity or femininity of the design. Let's jump into the scriptures for edification. Can you read 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 18, please? And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. We see Tamar wearing a robe, right? So does that make a robe in itself a woman's garment? Let's see what David and the priest wore. Can you read 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 27, please? And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and all the Levites that bear the ark, and the singers... And Taniah, the master of the song with the singers, David had also upon him an ephod of linen. Now, how could men and women be wearing robes when the law forbids a man from wearing a woman's garment? We see here the men and women wearing robes because the robe's style is what differentiates which gender it pertains to. The styles of the robes, whether masculine as David and the priest wore, or feminine as the virgin daughters of David wore. Distinguish what pertaineth unto a man and what is considered a woman's garment. The men aren't wearing effeminate robes and the women aren't wearing masculine robes to help understand how they are keeping the law, though wearing garments of the same clothing category. So thus far you see, Tamar, 
was not wearing a robe that pertained unto a man, and David was not wearing a woman's robe as commanded. Now let's touch on the color of a garment. We see Tamar had a garment of diverse colors, which is fitting as most women enjoy an array of colors in their apparel. Now, is this only something for women's clothing? Let's see. Can you read Genesis chapter 37, verse 3, please? Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Hopefully you understand already why it's lawful for a man and a woman to wear a garment of many colors, because the style of the actual garment is according to their respective genders. With this, we have a good foundation of understanding simplicity of differentiation of clothing is based on the masculinity or femininity of the style and design of the article of clothing. That definitely helps for nowadays, because there's a skewed line nowadays with clothing and it allows people to go off. The law is to, to keep us safe, is to keep us from going into a direction where the devil can have place or where the devil can can lead us astray. So you can see how Allah is putting things in place to really save us, to really keep us from going in the ways of the world. Amen. Amen. Now let's not leave it there, but let's see that men and women do have similar categories of clothing in scripture to confirm our understanding through precepts that the differentiation of clothing is by the respective designs to know whether a garment is for a man or a woman. Let's start with the women. We are already seeing that women and men wear robes. Let's see what else we can find in scripture. Can you read Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 2 and 3, please? I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with the dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. This was a woman. She was sleeping comfy in her bed, and her husband knocks at the door. Continue reading, please. I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? There we see that's a woman who put off her coat before bed, which lets us know women wear coats. So can men wear coats as well? Leviticus chapter 8, verse 13, please. And Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with girdles, and put bonnets upon them, as Ahiah commanded Moses. So not only are there men's coats, there are also men's girdles, men's headgear, such as bonnets. And there are also bonnets femininely styled for women as well. Let's see the attire of the daughters of Zion. Can you read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 18, and verse 20, please? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 3 and 18. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 20. The bonnets. There we see women's bonnets. What about women's girdles? Can you read Joseph and Asenath? Chapter 3, verse 9, please. And Asenath hurried and put on a fine linen robe of blue woven with gold. We already saw their men's and women's robes. Continue reading, please. And a golden girdle round her waist. All right. There we see women's girdles. Also, girdles were amongst the accessories of the daughters of Zion in Isaiah chapter 3 as well. So what other garments do women wear in scripture? Continue reading, please. And she put bracelets around her hands and feet. And about her feet, she put golden buskins. Buskins are boots, by the way, which women still like. Continue reading, please. And she put on golden trousers and a necklace around her neck. Here we see women's pants. Trousers, by definition, are an outer garment covering the body from the waist to the ankles with a separate part for each leg. 
as you can see, the definition is describing pants. They are men's pants in scripture too. The priests had them made for them to wear, for example. Can you read Exodus 39 and 28, please? And a mitre of fine linen, and goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twine linen. The English definition for breeches are pants that end just below the knee. This is descriptive of shorts or underpants for men, all of which are categorically types of pants. One Hebrew definition is in age 4370, in the sense of hiding, only in dual drawers from concealing the private parts, breeches. And by definition, drawers are underpants. Right. Or underwear, the same. Right. Now we see men had breeches, which are shorts, underpants, or underwear, while women had trousers, which are long pants to the ankles. Does that mean men can't wear pants to the ankles or women can't wear underwear or shorts designed for women under their garments? Hopefully you already know the answer by now. No. <laughs> <laughs> men can wear long pants masculinely styled for men and women can wear underwear femininely styled for women, like panties for women and briefs for men, for example. Remember, Hebrew words have more meaning when spoken in their own language. Can you read the prologue of Sirach, please? For the same things other than Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. Thus having the scriptures interpreted out of Hebrew into Greek and English, the Hebrew definition for breeches means more than just underwear. Can you read the other definition in 4370, the Brownersburg definition, please? Underwear, drawers, trousers. So there we see. There we see the word in Hebrew not only means underwear, but also means trousers too. So we can know there are truly men's pants and women's pants according to scripture. And the Hebrew language and the simplicity of differentiation is by the design and style, whether feminine for women or masculine for men. So thus far we have learned there are coats, robes, bonnets or hats, girdles or belts, and pants that are women's garments and men's garments. Remember, sisters, your wisdom and understanding in the law is just not to wear clothes that pertain unto men by making differentiation based on the design and style so as to avoid masculinely styled clothing because that is what pertains unto a man. And make sure it's modest. We're getting there. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, throw that in before somebody take it and run with it. Right. You know, I'm stopping at this part of the video and right. listen. <laughs> uh, can you read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, please? Yeah. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Ahayam Elohim commanded me, that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. All right. So let your wisdom and understanding be shown unto all nations by just not wearing garments that pertain unto men by evidence of their masculine style or design. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, one more time, please? <laughs> The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto a higher the Elohim. So, in plain English, cross dresses are breaking the law of a higher Elohim. There are men's long garments, which are evident by the masculine style as well. Can you read first Samuel chapter 24, verse 11, please? Moreover, my father, see, yea, See the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off thy skirt of thy robe. So women, you must be mindful not to wear long garments that pertain to a man as well. 
you probably could understand a man's robe that has a skirt to it as the thobes worn among the Arabs today or the kimono of the Japanese, for example. Now, knowing the wisdom of understanding in the law, let's look at what type of women's apparel women ought to adorn themselves in to get a more complete understanding of lawful women's apparel. Can you read 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, please? In like manner also, the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. So you have two simple rules for attire. Ensure it's not something that pertains to a man and that it is modest apparel that helps you remain shamefaced so as to remain bashful towards men, not seeking to draw their attention and modest toward Allah Hayyam in reverence for him. The definition of modest is dressing or behaving so as to avoid impropriety or indecency, especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. The other definition of modest clothing is not revealing or emphasizing the figure. Hopefully this helps to simplify things when seeking out modest apparel. The Greek definition shows when you dress as not to reveal or emphasize your figure is decorous, which means in keeping with good taste and propriety, it's polite and restrained. Can you read the Greek definition for modest, please? In G2887. In the primary sense, orderly, that is decorous. Of good behavior, modest. And the Thayer's definition, please. Well arranged, seemly, modest. So when figuring out your wardrobe to keep things modest, apparel that's not revealing or emphasizing your figure is a simple rule to preserve modesty. And of course, layers of flowy accessories and garments help in that endeavor to maintain your shamefacedness. In simplicity, you want to avoid the spirit of fornication by wearing any apparel that exposes the things that are precious in you to entice a man to lust after you. We have an example of what not to do by the Egyptian woman that was overcome by fornication and how she dressed. Can you read Testament of Joseph, chapter 9, verse 5, please? For when I was in her house, she was wont to bear her arms and breasts and legs that I might lie with her. See, she was very beautiful, splendidly adorned in order to beguile me. And the Lord guarded me from her devices. Notice, she was splendidly adorned with clothing, but her breasts, arms, and legs were exposed to entice the man to desire her. So you can see the exposure of these body parts in attire entice lust. The way she dressed and exposing herself was a similitude of the evil spirits by the fact that evil spirits called the women in black dress in light manner with themselves exposed and figures revealed in their clothing and heads uncovered to entice men as well. Right. So women, when you have the, the urge or the push to want to dress in such a way, you should know what's actually enticing you to actually move that way or to, to reveal the different body parts of your body in public. Um, it, it definitely is a spirit that is leading and guiding you, trying to get you to operate in that fashion. Um, go ahead, Brother Kassel. Okay. In due time, we're going to know exactly which spirit that is. Can we see the evil spirits called the women in black, how they adorn themselves in Hermas Parable 9, please? Chapter so, 9, verse 5. Okay. So 12 women were called most beautiful in form, clad in black. So they didn't wear modest apparel to hide their figure because he could see it straight up. Continue, please. Girded about and having the shoulders bare. They exposed their shoulders to entice a man's desire for them. Continue, please. With their hair hanging loose. And they were not ashamed to go about uncovered in the spiritual world. So the spirit of shamefacedness is not with them. 
you may have noticed this appearance is promoted and encouraged in the world as these spirits are at work in the world. Now, the sisters of HRC are seeking to be virtuous women and wives of the faithful. So how does a believing man view a worldly woman? Can you continue, please? And these women, I thought, had a savage look. A believing man sees this appearance as savage, though the world may promote this promiscuous appearance. So to avoid the savage look, wear clothing that doesn't bear your breasts, your shoulders, your arms, or your legs in simplicity, and cover your head when going about in the world to maintain your shamefacedness and seemly appearance by ensuring your attire doesn't reveal or emphasize your figure. This will keep you from the spirit of fornication, the mother of all evils, who's pushing to lead women in this direction. Can you read the Testament of Simeon, chapter 5, verse 3, please? Beware, therefore, of fornication, for fornication is the mother of all evils. Separate him from Elohim and bring it near to Belier. She, speaking of fornication, leads her daughters to adorn themselves, to deceive the mind of men, to desire them, as we've seen the Egyptian woman did in the physical world, and the spirits called the women in black were doing in the spiritual world. Sisters, you have a great opportunity to increase in prayer and diligence against this mother of evils, because she attacks you all more by the Lord's revelation, so you can be aware and resist her desires of heart and her desires in outward looks and her desires of appearance. Can you read Reuben chapter 5, verse 3, please? For moreover concerning them, the angel of the Lord told me and taught me that women are overcome by the spirit of fornication more than men, and in their heart they plot against men. You know these things in your understanding. So in your heart, plot to be shamefaced and modest, guarding yourself against the desire of getting attention or seeking to be desired by a man who is not your husband or a man Allah has not revealed to be your husband. Wait on Allah for his instruction with patience and temperance. Continue, please. And by means of their adornment, they deceive first their minds. She, speaking of the spirit of fornication, she will seek to get you to do this still. But today, may you be aware of the fight you are in and resist this by your change of intent and using your modest adorning as a means for you to show your modesty and shamefacedness in your heart's intent not to deceive the mind of a man. Now, the women who do dress to get attention to capture a man's desire, once she gets that man looking at her, this comes next. Continue reading, please. And by the glance of the eye and steal the poison, and then through the accomplished act, they take them captive. For a woman cannot force a man openly, but by a heartless bearing, she beguiles him. Let me let me touch on this real quick before you go. I don't want to get you keep, keep moving and get off. You go on to another topic. All right. Women. I know a lot of you all are going to say, I don't dress this way for a man. I dress this way for myself. But if you actually are truthful with yourself, you do everything for a man. You dress that way for a man to gain the attention. You get attention out of it. So you definitely have to be true, truthful and honest with yourself to actually see, hey, why am I doing this? Why am I dressing this way? Why am I revealing these things? And eventually you will get down to the, the root of it is that you desire the attention and a higher willing, um, you'll come to that realization and be able to change it for the better. Uh, Brother Casa, throw that in there. No, that's really important. Um, unfortunately, the world has taught us 
that a woman's value is based on her parents. And some women, they ain't growing up seeking that attention for validation. Right. Well, since the self-worth, like, though you may not want the man to literally come try to sleep with you, but him being attracted to you makes you feel like you're... De desired or worthy. Yeah. Unfortunately, the world does that. It's throughout television, unfortunately, throughout how people operate in the world. So hopefully, as Apple mentioned, you get the time to really sit back and look at it, look in yourself and assess what's really pushing you that direction and get to some clarity. Thank you. Praise Ohio. Now, here at Hebrew Readers Church, our sisters are building to be good wives and maidens of Allah Hayim, walking in a virtuous woman's bearing to be and show themselves modest and shamefaced as it's becoming of a woman professing holiness. So these traits of a harlot's appearance and mannerisms through fornication's devices don't be found in you. Now, touching back to these evil women in black who are walking in the will of Belier, their savage appearance was not without intent. They adorn themselves intending to deceive men to desire them, just as we learn the spirit of fornication leads unto, as we discuss in a girl power lesson. If you have an opportunity, please refer back to the Girl Power Lesson and the whole women's series playlist. It's very good. All right. We'll probably put it up here so you'll see it on the video. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how these evil spirits entice men, even believe in men who are of double minds and weak in the faith. Can you read Hermas, Parable 9, chapter 13, verse 8, please? Mm -hmm. After a certain time, when they were persuaded by the women whom thou sawest clad in black raiment, and having their shoulders bare and their hair loose and beautiful in form, when they saw them, they desired them, and they clothed themselves with their power, but they stripped off from themselves the power of the virgins. Here we get a glimpse into the spiritual warfare. As these men being enticed by these women's appearance and captured in the desires of these women to take pleasure in indulging their respective spirits. This happens in the spirit and it happens in the real world. Let's see what spirits these men started fornicating against Allah I am with. Can you read chapter 15 verse 2 of Proverbs parable 9 please? Here saith he. Likewise, the names of the women that wear the black garments. Of these also, four are more powerful than the rest. The first is unbelief. The second, intemperance. The third, disobedience. The fourth, deceit. And there followeth a cause sadness, wickedness, wantonness, irascibility, falsehood, folly, slander, hatred. The servant of Elohim that bears these names shall see the kingdom of Elohim, but shall not enter into it. Now, we are in the women's series, but touching for the men. Brothers, if you find the desire for women is still a struggle, and being honest with ourselves, that's letting us know we still have work to do to get to being single-minded and strong in the faith. Even in baby steps, if you find yourself in the world and you desire women that fashion themselves like this, it tells you where you are. Because if you're not desirous to have a virtuous woman or a woman that's clothing herself properly, then that tells you where you are in your walk and where you are in, in your growth and the things that you have need of. Because if you're desiring a woman that fashions herself like an evil spirit, then that evil spirit still has a place in you as well. And if you're unmarried, Allah is not going to give you a wife until you desire a holy wife or a righteous wife. And for those that are married, you should keep your eyes set upon your wife. And if you find yourself looking at another woman, especially a woman that's dressed in this fashion, 
then you already know where your heart is as well. There's a mandate to help protect from the desire for women that are not your wives to think upon your own wife always. Right. Now, these spirits, unbelief, disobedience, deceit, sadness, wickedness, wantonness, irascibility, falsehood, folly, slander, hatred. These 12 women, with their savage look, weren't merely savage in appearance, but were the evil spirits that can lead the faithful away from the kingdom, just as a woman in the attire of a harlot in the world will lead a man to his death in this world. So you can understand the spiritual things are truly manifested in the real world as well. And one more thing for the men. Zach, well, you mentioned something important. If the desire is still in us, it's showing us also that these spirits have still have place in us because we're desiring their manifestation in the world. <laughs> An important thing to help overcome this thing is when you see somebody struggling, whether it be with fornication or any of these spirits, program or practice the change of mind to have compassion for them rather than looking at them as if looking down upon them. Because from Judah, we learned that if we don't have compassion on a person struggling, those very same spirits are going to attack us and get us to fall. So hopefully that helps in, as you're building, taking the baby steps to get to the right mind in Christ. Well, hopefully, hopefully you get there because the first thing that's going to come, it's going to be the lust and fornication that's going to attack you. And if you can't get past that, to get to the place where you don't desire it and and you start looking down upon them because the only way you can look down upon them is if you don't desire what they're doing or you think that you're better than where they are in their walk and you know once you get to that point yes grabbing a hold of that um, compassion and and seeing that we were in the world the same as they were. But you got to get past the fornication first, if that's a problem. And then from there, you deal with the other problems of maybe high mindedness, or pride or arrogance, you deal with those spirits, until you completely rid out of everything that's causing you to stumble. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So touching back on the sisters, the same way these evil spirits lead men away from the kingdom in spirit, women in the attire of harlots or the savage look also lead men away from the kingdom in the world to their death. Can you read Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10, and then verse 26 and 27, please? All right. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 26. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Proverbs 7 and 27. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. Thus we see, as in the spirit, so also in the flesh. The attire of an harlot is not the path to the kingdom. So for confirmation of the two simple rules for adorning yourself, avoid wearing the attire of a harlot that emphasizes or reveals your figure or exposes your arms, your shoulders, your breasts, or your legs. In regards to your arms, for understanding of what is fit for a modest arm length of your shirts, from the precepts we went over, light is shed on bearing the arm to entice a man, and having the shoulders bare was used to entice as well. Hence, we get understanding that when dressing modestly, wearing shirts or blouses that at least cover the arm from the shoulder to the elbow is modest and righteous for sisters, so as not to have the shoulders bare. With all that, shirts that 
at least go down to the elbow, are modest in arm length for sisters and brothers in the faith of Allah Hayyam. This simplicity of not exposing oneself nor emphasizing one's figure with modest apparel is essential. Dressing immodestly not only leads men to death, but also will lead you to punishments for using such wiles to deceive men with the evil intent of heart. Right. That um, brings us back to the fourth evil spirit of the women clad in black deceit. Because the woman in proverb had no um, remorse to deceive him or to lie to him. Mm -hmm. And the spirits at work right. was driving the action. Now, let's understand the accountability men and women have respectively. Firstly, the man has his own punishment for not having his heart right to be enticed to desire you for pleasure because if a man looks at you to lust after you, he committed adultery in his heart. Can you read Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, please? <clears throat> but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So you see, men have our own responsibility to change our mindset and view to see a woman in the right way and not for lust's sake. Now for the women, if you're in the spirit of shamefacedness, dressing in modest apparel with good intent, and a man falls to his own lust, just like the evil judges did in the days of Susanna, though she went as far as to cover her face to maintain her shamefacedness, then that guilt is upon the man that needs to overcome his own lust. And you are guiltless, even as Susanna was found to be before Allah Hayyam. So you can know, just focus on being single-minded, to do what's right in the sight of Allah Hayyam with good intent, as he weighs the spirits, so that you may be found in good standing with him, regardless of how a man struggling with fornication may view you. But now, if you are being led by the spirit of fornication, plotting in your heart to adorn yourself for adultery, whether in the attire of a harlot or even with some modesty, but with that harlot's bearing in your mannerisms and behavior to get the attention enticing men to lust after you. Though you may not literally sleep with every man that looks at you, would you be guiltless? Let's look at the Apocalypse of Peter, the Achmim Fragment 23, please. And there was a great lake full of flame and mire, wherein were certain men that turned away from righteousness, and angels' tormentors were set over them. And there were also others, women, hanging by their hair above the mire, which boiled up. And these were they that adorned themselves for adultery. You see that there are women in torment for adorning themselves for adultery being punished for the act of adorning themselves for that intent. So a woman who adorns herself with the wrong intent is not guiltless, so that we can understand it's not an innocent act to adorn yourself immodestly to entice a man unto adultery with his eyes unto you. Let's read who else is in these torments. Continue reading, please. And the men that were joined with them in the defilement of adultery were hanging by their feet and had their heads hidden in the mire and said, We believe not that we should come unto this place. You see, the men that were defiled in adultery were punished as well. So looking at a woman to lust after them is committing adultery in one heart and is punishable too because it defiles the heart of the person. Can you read Matthew chapter 15, verse 19 and 20, please? For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. You can see how Ahaya truly weighs the spirits as we discuss in the alignment of the heart lesson. Because the woman is punished for her intent of heart when adorning herself. 
and the man is punished for the evil desire of his heart to be joined in the defilement of adultery by looking at the woman to lust after her. Right. And it's the evil desire of the heart. It's not just seeing something because we can't control what we see in life. There's some things that we're going to see and we're just going to have to turn our head or we're going to have to put our head down or whatever the case is. But it's about the heart. It's about desiring it so that everybody can truly understand where the where the the fault lied or lies. Thank you. Now, of course, the married woman who fulfills her desire by sleeping with a man that is not her husband and the men who fulfill their lusts by sleeping with women that are not their wives are also punished, of course, unceasingly. Can you read Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 38, please? And again, I saw men and women with very black faces in a pit of fire. And I sighed and lamented and asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are fornicators and adulterers who committed adultery having wives of their own. Likewise, also the women committed adultery having husbands of their own. Therefore, they unceasingly suffer penalties. Mind you, women who aren't married and sleep with men in fornication, defiling their virginity, are punished as well. All right. Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 39, please. And I saw there girls having black raiment and four terrible angels having in their hands burning chains. And they put them on the necks of the girls and led them into darkness. And I again weeping asked the angel, Who are these, sir? And he said to me, These are they who, when they were virgins, defiled their virginity unknown to their parents, for which cause they unceasingly pay the proper penalties. Waiting to give oneself unto a man in marriage is important for you young women in the faith to avoid punishments while also honoring your parents and Allahayim. Can you read Apocalypse of Peter chapter 11, please? Beside them shall be girls clad in darkness for a garment and they shall be sore chastised and their flesh shall be torn in pieces. These are they that kept not their virginity until they were given in marriage. And with these torments shall they be punished and shall fill them. Knowing these things, abide in shamefacedness and modesty, fair in Allah Hayyam, seeking how you may please the Lord, protecting your virginity, honoring your parents, not operating in secret behind them, and cleaving to your father in the faith who is the savior of your body until he give you to a man of understanding whom the Lord wills. Who knows, it may be Allah Haim's will that your father keep you as a virgin for a greater glory in the kingdom of Christ. Of course, that's a matter to pray about and we pray Allah Haim hear your prayers through Lord Yache and show what his will is for his daughters in the faith. All right. Isn't there scriptures in Surat that talk about um, marry thy daughter depending on what's going on so yeah. you, right so you can actually understand when it's a good idea or if i lie and place it on your heart for your daughter to remain a virgin the things to look for and if not give her unto marriage to save her right you can visit the website the building the family the understanding marriage a lot of these scriptures are in there for edification as well. On the website, everybody. www.hebrewreaders.com Thank you. <laughs> I feel like there's an ad-lib. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are some sisters who may have fell to these punishable things in their life and defile themselves in the works of the world, whether fornication, adultery, or defiling their virginity, being led by the spirits of the world. Be not discouraged, because the apostles preached to people just like us to encourage us unto the faith and good works to bring forth fruits of repentance. 
Can you read Acts of Thomas, chapter 37, please? You men that have come to the assembly of Christ and would believe on Yache, take example hereby. And see if you are not lifted up, you cannot see me. And you will not be able to spy on me. If you cannot see me unless you lift yourself up a little from the earth, how then can you see him that dwell in the height and is now found in the depth? Unless you first lift yourself up out of your former old ways and your unprofitable deeds. With your desire that tolerate not and the wealth that is left in here and the possession of earth that grows old and the raiment that corrupts and the beauty that waxeth old and vanishes away. And yet there are even more out of your whole body where such things are stored up and which grows old and becomes dusty, returning to its own nature. For it is the body that maintains all of these things, but rather believe on our Lord Yahweh Christ, whom we preach, that your hope may be in him, and in him you may have life in this world without end, that he may become your fellow traveler in this world of sin, and may be to you a harbor in this troubled sea, and he shall be to you a fountain springing up in this thirsty land and a chamber filled of food in this place of them that hunger and a rest to your souls. Yes, and a physician for your bodies. Then the multitude of them that were gathered together hearing these things wept and said to the apostle, O man of Elohim, the Elohim whom you preach, we dare not say that we are his. For the works which we have done are alien to him and not pleasing to him. But if he will have compassion on us and pity us and save us, overlooking our former deeds, and will set us free from the evils which we committed, being in sin, and not impute them to us, nor make remembrance of our former sins, we will become his servants, and we will accomplish his will to the end. And the apostle answered them and said, He reckons not against you, neither takes account of the sins which you have committed being in sin, but overlooked your transgressions which you have done in ignorance. Amen. Amen. There's a few things that I'm seeing here to help for our perspective. Upon hearing the mercy and the gospel of Christ, these folks here, they said, we dare not say that we are his. You see the humility. They didn't count themselves to be of the number. They didn't come to him in pomp, thinking they are the elect or they are chosen. But they were humbly seeking him. And they acknowledged the truth that, okay, the things that we've done, they're alien to him and not pleasing to him. And they came that if we would have compassion and overlook our sins and not impute them unto us, we will become his servants and accomplish the will to the end. So you remember in the Psalms 15 lesson, who should abide in his holy hill? A person that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. These folks said, if he'll forgive us, we know what we did wasn't pleasing to him. But if he'll overlook it and forgive us, we'll become his servant and accomplish his will to the end. And this is where we are. Sisters, whatever happened in the past, Yache, the apostle spoke on his behalf. He doesn't reckon it against you and he overlooks it because it was done in ignorance. Now, you have the opportunity today. You see what he's doing? Become his servant and accomplish his will unto the end. Put the work in to overcome these things. Don't let sorrow get you down. Don't let doubtful mind make you think you can't do it or sorrow feel you won't be able to be forgiven for it. Forgive yourself. It was a mistake. Mistakes, possibly. 
you have the lesson, judge not yourselves and forgive as the Lord forgives. If you need understand on how to get out of that and press toward this thing. All right. Because you know now, if you didn't know before, your Lord and everlasting Father, Yahweh Christ, is not holding it against you. If you're willing to work. All right. And press forward. Okay. And that's the thing about it. Not beating yourself up. Once you find out what you're, what's required of you, it's not beating yourself up because you just can't change it drastically. Some things you can change very, very quickly, but there's some things that are actual struggles and it takes time and you have to be patient with yourself, but steady pressing forward to overcome it. Amen. See the love Yache has. He winks at ignorance truly. And he doesn't hold it against you. And this is the love of Christ Yache to overlook our sins done in ignorance if we become his servants and accomplish his will unto the end by overcoming these weaknesses in our flesh to keep his commands and bear the fruits of the Spirit. We here at Hebrew Readers Church are not here to judge or speak evil of you, but to bear the burden, gently comforting and entreating you onto putting it behind you and pressing forward onto the kingdom. Can you read Titus chapter 3, verse 2 and 3, please? To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. As family, we ourselves understand how these lusts of the flesh had gotten an advantage over us through our former pleasures in them. Verse four, please. But after that, the kindness and love of Elohim, our Savior, toward men appeared. Now that Yahweh appeared and has given us hope of deliverance through his gospel, thankfully we have this place of repentance while it is called today to confess our sins, do these things no more, and work to overcome the pleasure in them and the desire for them and focus on renewing our minds and keeping our bodies pure in good works, pressing forward by faith in Yahweh Christ and his atonement for our former sins. Now that you know these things and believe in him, can you read Ephesians 4, 21 to 22, please? If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Yahweh, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So put off fornication of the mind and the different acts of fornication and adultery. Continue to verse 23, please. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put the work in to change your mindset onto good, honest, and shamefaced works in the fear of the Lord and reverence for your head the man. Verse 24, please. And that you put on the new man, which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness. Overcoming fornication by becoming that righteous and truly holy woman is Lord Yahweh's will. As he gave commandments to abstain from fornication. Can you read First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2 to 5, please? Mm -hmm. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Yahweh. For this is the will of Elohim, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not Elohim. Taking the time to be honest with yourself, humbly and patiently buckling down to overcome the lusts we have learned from the unbelieving Gentiles, manner of living, to possess our vessels in sanctification and honor is glorifying Allah in our body 
and joining ourselves unto Yahche in our spirits. Because when separating our bodies from harlots, whether it be a harlot of a man or a harlot of a woman, and the evil spirits like fornication and the lust that had formerly joined us unto them. In 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4, it says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So it's a requirement for every believer to know how to control their own spirit, to be able to abstain from something and not be given over. We should be able to make logical decisions. We should be able to make our own decision, not being enticed or, or, or pulled a certain direction, but we should be able to say, okay, I know what that is. Am I going to make a conscious decision to do that or to abstain from it? And that's where we're supposed to be in our walk. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. So we have to know how to possess our vessel. We have to know how to have temperance and how and, and control our spirit. And that is a requirement for us as believers in this walk to get to the point where we are able to make a conscious decision of what we're doing and not being tossed to and fro. Coming out of these struggles or inclinations or pleasures and desires and the evil spirits will help us attain unto that. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 and 17, please? What? Know ye not, he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Now, as you know, we cannot be joined unto the Lord and joined unto harlots in the flesh or in the spirit by walking in the power of any of those twelve women or any of the daughters of the devil like sadness and doubtful mindedness you dear sisters are highly valuable to the lord and he has bought you back from the enemy with the price of his blood so that you would know his love for you as he laid down his life for you his friend and daughter so that you would return the love by dying to yourself in the inner woman to protect your mind your soul and your body from the spirit of fornication, that his mother, the Holy Spirit, and his wife, Jerusalem, the mother of us all, may dwell in you. Can you read 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, please? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Elohim, and ye are not your own? Value being Elohim's possession, not your own, and treat your body and spirit as his possession. Can you read verse 20, please? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Elohim in your body and in your spirit, which are Elohim's. To treat yourself as precious and of high value by protecting the things that are precious in you, not exposing yourself indecently, no giving your body unto a man that is not your husband that Allah I am joined you with. Rather, focus on keeping yourself pure in pleasing the Lord until given in marriage, if he wills. Can you read first Corinthians chapter 7, verse 34, please? There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. We now know the key to that is avoiding fornication in the mind, in the body, and in actions. Now also, the work against the spirit of fornication doesn't stop there. When you are brought to the place where Allah has made you ready for marriage, then you focus on pleasing your husband, the savior of your body, as you know from the last lesson. Continue reading, please. But she that is married care for the things of the world how she may please her husband. Please refer to the lesson called Man, His Wife, and Christ. 
as well as grab a hold of contentment and alignment of the heart for edification on healthy relationship building. Now, you're going to find those tabs over there somewhere. <laughs> now, this brings to mind, since we're on this topic, in the relationship between husband and wife, their bed is undefiled. Can you read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, please? Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, Allah will judge. So between a husband and wife, in the privacy of their home and bedroom, they are not in any defilement to wear attracting attire that they may please each other by their good desire for one another in due benevolence. Also, they are not in any fault to enjoy extramarital pleasures between one another as well to avoid fornication. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2, please? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. For further edification on all these things concerning marriage, visit the drop tab, Building a Family, and see all the different tabs on marriage as there are ways married folks can defile themselves according to the law that is needful to know. A link to the site should come up with this comment as well. Now, getting back to the modest apparel and the spirit of shamefacedness and good intent of heart. When not in the presence of just your husband in the privacy of your bedroom and going about in the world amongst anyone else, women dressed in layers to ensure their figures weren't highlighted in their attire for what the scriptures show. For example, let's look at the garments of the daughters of Zion for edification because they dress modestly when in humility. Can you start at Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, please? In that day, the Lord would take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls. Calls is, by definition, a woman's close-fitting indoor headdress or hairnet. The definition in Hebrew is H7636, from an unused root meaning to interweave a netting for the hair. Call. Continue, please. And their round tires like the moon. That's some neck jewelry. As we know, jewelry is lawful. Continue, please. Verse 19. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. A muffler is a wrap or scarf worn around the neck or face for warmth. Hebrew definition is H7479, a long veil as fluttering, a muffler. Continue, please. The bonnets. Bonnets are fancy headdresses. The definition is H6287, an embellishment that is a fancy headdress. Beauty bonnet, woolly ornament, tire. And the ornaments of the legs and the headbands. Headbands is H7196, an ornamental girdle for women. So it's a, another style of woman headdress, of course. Continue, please. And the tablets and the earrings, the changeable suits of apparel. The changeable suits of apparel is H4254. It's a mantle, easily drawn off, changeable suit of apparel change of raiment so this apparel is easily changeable to be taken off i think this shows a loose flowy clothing they would wear as it's easy to be taken off it's not tight fitting to where they can't be able to get it off them and that helps you see it wouldn't be revealing per se continue please and the mantles mantles is h4595 a cloak an over tunic mantle Continue, please. They actually showed the women had on mantles in the Assyrian artifacts. Yeah, the one, yeah, that yeah. They hanging down. It was long, too. So it was nice, and veiled, and fluttery covered. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and the wimples? Wimples is H4304. It's a wide cloak for a woman. Veil or wimple or cloak. Continue, please. And the crispin pins. Crispin pins are purses, right? We can keep rolling. The glasses and the fine linen. 
The fine linen in H5466 is from an unused root meaning to envelop a wrapper, that is, a shirt. Fine linen sheet. So they had shirts, of course. Continue, please. And the hoods. Hood is H6797, a headdress that is a piece of cloth wrapped around a diadem hood, Maitri turban. Continue, please. And the veils. Veil is H7289 in the sense of spreading, a veil as expanded. As you can see, they had multiple, it was layers of things to help them in their adorning. And you see the Daughters of Zion had flowy layers to help them dress nicely in humility. Women, now women vary in forms of beauty, as Elohim has created each according to his will. And there are articles of clothing that accommodate women's different forms to maintain their modesty. Some women have the need for more flowy clothing to accommodate their physique to maintain their modesty than others as well. And may I hire guide you sisters to do so for your endeavor of holiness. Now, it's a sin for women to wear men's pants, men's leggings, men's tights, or men's underwear of any kind. As the law says, a woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man in Deuteronomy 22 and 5. It's not a sin to wear women's pants, women's leggings, women's tights, or women's underwear for women. A sister should just ensure its modest apparel, as women professing piety ought to do with shamefacedness. So loose-fitting trousers are fine according to the law and testimony. A woman who is mindful of the Lord will consider loose-fitting clothing, since some women are more comely in shape than usual. And they all have to ensure they're wearing modest apparel with shamefacedness. Some may even have to wear a flowy dress or blouse or skirt over their pants to accommodate their beauty and shape for modesty's sake. We see in scriptures that women wore mantles, over tunics, cloak, robes, hoods, veils, mufflers, which are like flowing veils or mantella, wimples, which are like shawls as well. In Isaiah chapter 3, verse 19 to 22, which are all flowing garments that help not reveal the physique of a woman. Also, women's pants ought to be unrevealing if they are going to be worn as an outer garment to maintain modesty. Tights, leggings, tight jeans, and or spandex should be worn under a flowing skirt or blouse to maintain a modest appearance of apparel. The apostles whose commandments are from the Lord. You can reference 1 Corinthians 14 and 37 and 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 2 to confirm that their commandments from the Lord. They commanded to adorn in modest apparel. So a woman may not provoke the Lord by not obeying his voice to dress in modest apparel as he commanded. We were commanded to beware of the Lord Yache and to obey his voice lest he pardon not our transgressions. Can you read Exodus chapter 23, verse 20 and 21, please? Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, that he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So in all things, do all things in the name of Lord Yache, obeying his voice, giving thanks unto Allah Hayim. Can you read Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, please? And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Yahshua, giving thanks to Allah Hayim and the Father by him. Amen. Amen. This was edifying. It helps give guidance in this world and in our endeavor, attaining unto holiness by our Lord Yahshua. We here at Hebrew Readers Church are here to strengthen brothers and sisters in the faith. If anyone needs filling of the spirit and is struggling with desires that are causing you not to be the man or woman you desire to be, please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. We'll be glad to pray for you or with you. We all need each other and we have to work together to overcome. Please like and share the videos so that we may reach many others that are called and strengthen them in the spirit of Yacha, our Lord and Savior. 
If Elohim has placed it in your heart to become a member with us here at Hebrew Readers Church, please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com, the subject member. With that, we love you all. And Mahaya Elohim keep you in your endeavor of righteousness. Amen. Um, just a, a little extra for the women. Um, don't be discouraged and don't be scared of change. Um, don't be afraid of how someone may perceive you because you're making the changes that are necessary for the salvation of your of your soul and really embrace it because this is for our life. You know, these things, we may see them as minute, but in the grand scheme of things, they're very important. And we all have to do our part. We all have to grow and change and come out of the ways of the world. And that's our, that's our um, journey that we have to take. It's our path that we have to go on in order to make it to where we want to be. So if this is for you, if this is a calling upon your life, then you have to follow that calling and you can't keep yourself and also serve Allah because they're contrary to one another. You can't serve your own desires and serve Allah desires because they're going to clash. So I encourage you to really take it on and really do the things that are needful for your salvation and to don't be afraid of what anyone, how anyone's going to perceive you or what anyone may say about you. Just do what's needful for Allah Hayyam. So, you got anything, Casa? Amen. And as we mentioned, for prayer, prayer has power. So, please just shoot us an email with your name and whatever you may be willing to tell us that's going on so we can put it in prayer as well. Because it's spiritual warfare that way. And we'll be praying for you and with you. Amen. All right. We're good. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. We love you all. We look forward to hearing from you guys. And may I keep you. Peace. Okay. HRC, 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 HRC,